this is the Honda E and today I will be range testing it finally so um, yes I I checked it out before at the Frankfurt Motor Show but this time I can actually drive it around test charge it uh, put banana boxes in it and all that stuff in this video it will be about the range test so I will show you the interior more in detail later but uh, otherwise this video is going to be too long but I guess I will show the important stuff so it has 17 inch Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires with well are these the rims yeah actually they are there's no uh, hubcap or anything so uh, uh, 225 45 17 okay I think ideally there should be some 16 inch wheels uh, trunk space by the way do a quick walk around we have a camera there looks like this uh, not very much uh, trunk space this would be one of the smallest cars I test nowadays okay and then in the back oh okay so it has this uh, Zoe style door opener on the back and space in the back not the uh, crazy yeah um, and then the front okay by the way it has camera as standard yeah so on e-tron you have to pay extra for it here you get it standard <laughs> that's pretty awesome and you can also adjust it here for example you switch there and then you can adjust uh, even though I don't know what's the point of it uh, well I guess you want to uh, adjust the viewpoint um, because if it's optical then of course you want to adjust it so we have a pretty big screen area high instrument cluster is a uh, uh, screen over here also lots of screen area so right now it shows you uh, charging status over there we can choose whatever uh, even this one is a screen huh huh what the heck <laughs> that's just crazy man so and I actually like this open area here you see and you have also a hidden cup holder here and one feature to test is this it has a 1.5 kilowatt Shuko. Huh? Can we try to charge another car with it? Plus also a 20, uh, 12 volt outlet there, 180 watts. USB, HDMI output, input, I mean, HDMI input. So you supposedly can play video games or watch videos. Uh, I guess maybe when you're parked. Two USB, no USB-C, only USB-A. Uh, also two more USB-C, uh, sorry, USB-A in the back. We have this center console thing here you can adjust these the way you like it it doesn't have an armrest here i'm missing that one and this is uh, supposedly fake wood and we have uh, this one is for one pedal driving you have drive mode sport eco whatever here uh, typical uh, gear selector for ev that's nice a uh, steering wheel is uh, not so thick but it's this two spoke style steering wheel honda style is yes, uh, with also pedals here to adjust uh, region so I'll come back, that, back to that once we start driving but it seems like this car charges fairly fast 100% let's go outside and check the charger status so it was charging at 22 kilowatt oh, okay okay now it's throttling it was actually charging at 22 kilowatt all the way to about 93 94 percent and now it's down to 10 kilowatt but I suspect that it has a top buffer we'll see so voltage is not too crazy it's 399 so it's the same as most other EVs so as usual we charge to 100% and then we do the slow test first so again I will test 90 kilometers per hour on the motorway because that's the fastest way to do it and that's the most uh, that's the way I can do it consistently on every car so uh, if you're wondering why I'm driving at 90 kilometers per hour in the 110 zone it's because I'm doing a test procedure all right I'm doing a test procedure after that one I will do 120 kilometers per hour then I will go 10 to 20 kilometers per hour over the speed limit. So hold your horses. We are on the moon now. So um, I found out I have to cruise at 92 kilometers per hour to be 90 on the GPS. Okay, and there, see the instrument cluster. We see stellar charge. I like that shit. And we see, uh, well, uh, the range is kind of low. Mm, yeah, but you know what? I want to have a shout out to uh, iMove who lent me this car. So um, they have, uh, they're starting a business now where they uh, rent out cars. You can rent cars 
uh, on, on a monthly basis and you can all, always upgrade or downgrade the class uh, whenever you need to and they have something called Schüttebil which is actually a Tesla or a fossil car you can borrow it's included in the whole rent thing it's a pretty cool concept uh, so uh, just check it out in the description below uh, shout out to them for lending me this car they say I can keep it for two weeks I was like what <laughs> But anyway, uh, so uh, now we will go to the regular place and weigh the car. By the way, I see that we have heated front windscreen. Yeah, huh. just like an e-golf. Front axle. Oh, 820 kilos, the whole car. 1620, oh, it's on par with MG ZS EV. Check rear axle. All right, okay, good. Okay, this will be the last day with nice weather for a while. Next week, it'll be raining all week. But you know what? That's good because I'm going to test these cameras in the rain to see how well they can handle it. So let's see now how is Muse. Wow, it's quite calm. If you look at the windsock, well, this one is uh, kaput. Uh, yeah, almost no wind. Mjösen today. Oh, Mjösen. Okay, Mjösen. All right, all right, all right. Calm down, guys. We just turned around at the turnaround point near Harman, and now we're heading back south. So, you know, I noticed something. You know, the I mentioned that I'm um, eco mode or whatever, drive mode. Look here. In the Honda E, you only have sport and normal. Yeah, I like that shit. No eco mode here. <laughs> no, but seriously, if you want eco mode, you can just... It depends on how you drive. And then I guess it depends on how you set the... Oh, okay. How you set um, the air conditioning. So, yeah. So, still nice weather, 26 degrees Celsius. Uh, by the way, consumption... 150... Oh, hang on, oops. Uh, 150 for a small light car like this is actually considered somewhat high. I believe uh, Zoe and uh, i3 have lower consumption. And the Korean cars, of course, they have even lower consumption. Ionic on the day, on the day like today, would probably average about 100 watt hour per kilometer. Yeah, or maybe at least 110. Uh, so, um, this one, I guess it's in the same league as uh, E28. But uh, we have to see the high speed test. I suspect that the Honda E will do better in the high speed test. We are back at the starting point now. I only did Dar, well, right over there. And uh, as always, I checked the distance here. So uh, it's supposed to be 135 kilometers. All right. And what well, actually, this one claims 133. So, uh, we have about 1% error here. Uh, it shows, uh, actually underports the range. Yeah, it's supposed to be 135 and it's 133.5-ish, whatever. Okay, but uh, we still have 30% uh, left, so let's go for another, well, half run then, and then we come back here. We are back at the starting point, and uh, according to the trip meter, we draw 176 kilometers. Uh, but the real distance was around 177 because of the 1% error. And then we came with 6%. And if we do the math, it means that uh, we can drive 189 kilometers. That's way less than the VLTP range of 220. But again, VLTP range is not the same as this procedure because that one involves some city driving. So I suspect that the drag coefficient in this car is not very good. Uh, because it's it's actually a very good day today and many cars they will actually beat the VLTP range if they draw today like uh, like the Korean cars or Tesla or whatever but okay uh, other stuff um, so the the consumption was actually 151 watt per kilometer that's uh, okay yes yeah, okay uh, actually okay to be honest it's a little bit high for this small car all right um, and then the, the, the energy available is actually only 28.6 kilowatt hours. So it seems like there is a top buffer. Um, I feel like when, when I started driving that I had a little bit of regen. So I suspect it's actually one to two kilowatt hour on the top and then the rest is in the bottom. So this one has a 35.5 kilowatt hour battery, similar to e-golf battery, but this one is 
actively cool. Yes. Okay, now we're gonna charge up a little bit. I'm gonna do the, the charging test and then we do the 120 kilometers per hour test. Okay, we've been here all an hour now. Uh, yeah, the timer says 61 minutes. So uh, we actually charged 100%. It went kind of slow uh, in the middle and then, but towards the end it went fast-ish. So that indicates again that we have a buffer on top, but we just happen to be at 100% now. Uh, I guess the charging is about to end. So now let's do the high speed run then, 120 kilometers per hour. We are on the move now. Yes, uh, what is the time? It's 22.45. So well, I like that uh, the clock and everything here is big letters. So uh, we have to cruise at 123 kilometers per hour to match 120 GPS speed. Uh, consumption is 234. Well, okay, it's 24 degrees Celsius outside. Still nice and hot. So um, not too bad consumption, I guess. I guess we have to see in the end then what it will be. So I will try to run it kind of low. You know, we started with 100% also this time. So let's see then in the end. Okay, the high speed test is over and the result is 120 kilometer range. Yeah, not too bad, right? Uh, and then the consumption is 225 watt up per kilometer. And actually, when you're going fast now, we could only pull 27.2 kilowatt hour. So that's actually about 1.5 kilowatt hour loss compared to the 90 kilometers per hour test. This is the nature of high speed tests. So actually, if I have time, I should try to uh, do it like this, charge 100% or whatever. So actually, you can see that you can say that uh, in the past, the, the tests I've done in the past are somewhat uh, inaccurate at a high speed because you have probably have some loss. So what we could do is we could just add the percentage of, of uh, loss and then assume that that's, that's the range at the high speed test. Yeah, so, um, oh well, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.